Hello and welcome to Bioaffairs. Today I'll be talking about inclusion bodies. So inclusion bodies are common to all the organisms like in plant cells, animal cells or even in the case of bacterial cell. So today I'll be talking about the inclusion bodies and their varieties present in the bacterial cells. So let's start with the characteristic forms of the inclusion bodies. Inclusions are common in all bacterial cells. Now they are formed by aggregation of substances that may be either organic or inorganic. Now inclusions can take the form of granules, crystals or globules and some are very amorphous. Some inclusions lie free in the cytoplasm of different organisms. Other inclusions are enclosed and can be bound by membranes, okay, clear phospholipid membranes. Some inclusions are surrounded by invagination of the plasma membrane as you can see in the picture. Now this inclusion bodies can be useful as a storage compound or maintaining the body structure or molecules that help them in availing the nearby atmosphere. The most common storage inclusion bodies are glycogen inclusions, polyhydroxyalkanoid granules, sulfur granules and polyphosphate granules. Now some storage inclusions are observed only in certain organisms they are exclusively exclusive like cyanophycin and cyanobacteria. Now, carbon is often stored as polyhydroxyalkanoid granules, also termed as carbonosomes. Now, several types of uh, granules have been identified, but the most common contain poly beta hydroxybutyrate, that is very common. Now, these granules are surrounded by a single layered cell composed of proteins, that is the important factor. Now, this PHB can be used in the industrial process of making biodegradable plastic. So this is very useful in our society and polyphosphate coming to polyphosphate granules and sulfur granules the polyphosphate granules store the phosphate needed for synthesis of important cell constituents such as nucleic acids in some cells they act as energy reserve and polyphosphate also conserves the energy source in some reactions so sulfur coming to sulfur globules they are formed by bacteria that use reduced sulfur containing compounds as a source of electrons during their energy conserving metabolic processes some of the examples are photosynthetic bacteria use hydrogen sulfide rather than water as an electron donor and accumulate the resulting sulfur either externally or internally for their future use some bacterial inclusions serve function other than simply storage substances and these inclusions are called micro compartments because they reside within a specific compartment like ethanol amine utilization micro compartment propondiol carboxysomes magnetosomes and chlorosomes there are different kinds of compartments here we'll focus on carboxysomes magnetosomes and chlorosomes which are best studied for human civilization carboxysomes are present in many cyanobacteria and other co2 fixing bacteria their polyhedral coat is composed of three different proteins and is about 100 nanometer in diameter. Associated with the cell is the enzyme carbonic anhydrase that converts carbonic acid and bicarbonate into CO2. That is very common you know. Recall that biological membranes allow the free diffusion of carbon dioxide. However, the carboxysome cell prevents CO2 from escaping so it can be accumulated. Enclosed with the polyhedron is the enzyme ribulose one pi bisphosphate carboxylase or oxygenase or rubisco commonly known as rubisco so rubisco is a critical enzyme for co2 fixation the process of converting co2 into sugar now aquatic magnetotactic bacteria use magnetosomes coming to magnetosomes they are very important for some bacteria northern hemisphere bacteria use their magnetic chain to determine northward and downward directions and swim down to neutron rich sediments or locate the optimum depth in freshwater or marine habitats in case of magnetic bacteria the southern hemisphere generally orients southward and downward same happens in case of southern hemisphere so magnetosomes are intracellular chains of magnetite or gregite particles that can be used to arrange themselves and collect the proper nutrients whatever they require for their normal growth and optimal location based analysis. They are around 35 to 125 nanometer in diameter and closed within an invagination of the plasma membrane. So this is a critical structure exclusive to those bacteria. 
Coming to chlorosomes, they are unique and specialized structures found in certain photosynthetic bacteria, particularly green sulfur bacteria and green filamentous bacteria. These bacteria are typically found in the anaerobic environment such as the bottom of stagnant water bodies or in the deep sea sediments. So chlorosomes primary function is to capture light energy and funnel it into the photosynthesis takes place. So unlike the chloroplast, chlorosomes are different. So they do not contain chlorophyll as they are the primary light absorbing pigment. So instead, they use bacteriochlorophylls, which are similar to chlorophylls, but with some structural differences. Now coming to gas vacuoles. So gas vacuoles provide buoyancy to some aquatic bacteria, not all bacteria, but which are photosynthetic. So it helps them to float their, themselves on the water body so that they can synthesize uh, from the photosynthesis or they can take up some food nutrients on the help of gaseous exchanges. So gas vacuoles are aggregates of enormous numbers of small hollow cylindrical structures called gas vesicles. Now gas vesicle walls are composed of many copies of single small protein that is very important. What do they do? They do the protein subunits assemble to form rigid cylinder that is impermeable to water but freely permeable to atmospheric gases. So you can understand that any gas, oxygen, CO2, or other types of gases can easily regulate it within and out of the cell with the help of these cylindrical structures. Now cells with gas vacuoles can regulate their buoyancy to float on the depth at the depth necessary for proper light intensity, oxygen concentration, and nutrient levels. So Suppose on the surface of water they need more lights, the organism which need more light they will go to the surface of water, which need low volumes of light they will be regulating their buoyancy to the lower levels of the water level. So that's, that's how these organisms can regulate the concentration of the gases or the numbers of gases and regulate their body uh, sinking capabilities so that they can survive in the nature. So I hope this I have covered all the inclusion bodies. So if you have any doubt, please ask me in the comment section. And if you need any specific class, please also tell me in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe.